This is Damien Ferry here from the Unshackled at the Stourward Bastion event, and we're here with Michael. And uh, tell us a bit about yourself, mate. Well, I'm 22 years old from Western Sydney. Uh, I've come out with a group of other like-minded young men, and we're here to protect the church today. Um, why, why did you choose to, to come out here and, and do this? Uh, because there's been a precedent of vandalism every year, as well as people uh, harassing worshippers and attempting to uh, disrupt any activities of the church, as well as to, to mock the institution and anyone who stands by those traditions. Hmm. Um, you were telling me earlier that you're actually an atheist. Um, now, a lot of people might think that um, because of that, that you wouldn't have any sort of, um, I guess, motive in doing so. But um, how do you sort of um, connect it or still um, ensure that it is important for you to take such a position as an atheist? Well, there's a number of uh, reasons. The, uh, the quite selfish one, which is that it's a very beautiful piece of architecture. Mm. I mean, you look around Sydney and this tradition of building is no longer... Uh, in fashion, and mm. the idea that someone wants to vandalise something so beautiful, it, it, it hurts, you know, mm. like, uh, it seems to be that these people worship ugliness, and mm. like to tear down anything that's beautiful, and I think this church is very beautiful, yeah. and I, uh, while I don't agree with all views of the Catholic Church, I do think that they've always been a cornerstone of our society, yeah. uh, they're an important part culturally, and while they're in decline, I think that, uh, I think that's a bad thing that it's in decline. I'm, I'm guessing that um, you think with the church um, having such uh, high moral standards um, on social issues in particular that its decline would um, lead to more sort of degenerate activity and, and bad things to come? Uh, yes, I do believe so. Mm. Uh, there's a couple of other factors, but I do think that uh, when you tear down an institution that is meant to be your moral foundation of society that you look for other things that aren't necessarily, in my opinion, moral or good. Yeah. Um, what, what are your thoughts on the actual Mardi Gras in itself? Uh, well, they've got the right to do it, but I find most uh, open sexuality and, uh, frankly, I'm disgusted by some of the things I see, you know, mm. men that are half naked running around. It's, I mean, we saw a bit of that today. Uh, and uh, it's also the social attitude towards it has changed. Uh, they're trying to get children involved now, and I think that that's a very damaging thing to us as a society. Mm. I think mm. that uh, if you corrupt the youth in such a way... Like not even they're not even trying to tell them just to be tolerant. They're trying to get them involved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's that's a completely different kettle of fish. So obviously they've got um, an agenda they're putting out. That um, I mean we're seeing it in our school education system with safe schools and uh, yes, yeah. university Marxism being um, you know. And they're obviously trying to um, also dumb and down the nation when it comes to gender fluidity and things that obviously are scientifically um, not true. That's exactly true, and it is uh, in a way to try and create a fake identity for them to follow so that uh, they've already deracinated our society and turned us to try to atomize us you know not to get too anti-capitalist on the, yeah, on the yeah. battle but uh, it is a commercial thing i mean you see many of the floats uh here today the business floats well uh, true the advertisements leading up to it is uh, a corporate entity mm. that often funds these things and i mean many many would say that um of course we have um businesses that are free to do whatever they sort of um, yeah. choose to support but in in saying that i mean it is a little bit suspicious when a lot of the big corporate sort of heavyweights are, are backing um certain views and trying to push society in a particular way i mean um does that sort of um tell you that there there, there is a lot of uh things we don't know there's a bit of influence there well, that, that these yeah. are the new elite the uh mm. they are the too much leftist rhetoric, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. they are the the establishment. Are, yeah, the homosexuality and its ancillary ideologies very much are the new bourgeois values. Mm. Uh, they don't represent many working class values. Mm. I mean, there are working class people who are quite tolerant of uh, homosexuals and what they do, but uh, often many don't like it, but they just won't say anything. That's 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 correct. I mean, um, it is. Funny enough, in general, I mean, um, the working class that tends to um, be more pro-family and um, you, a lot of people don't expect that because they think that um, the, the, the rich are more conservative even though it tends to be quite the opposite, opposite way. Yes, and uh, it's quite interesting that uh, celebrities and corporate heads endorse this kind of thing. Mm, they, mm. It, show, it goes to show that this is the new value of the elite. That's right. So to speak, I wouldn't call them elite by yeah. the definition of elite, but I think your audience understands what I mean. Yeah, yeah, I mean, um, it's really destroying the family unit and um, 
it's um, yeah, putting obviously future generations on the on the wrong track of things. What um, what do you think was the first sort of um, event, or I guess the the biggest impact in the past that like started all this in the first place? I would have no idea. Mm. Um, I think that it's just been a very slow decline. I mean, was it the straw that broke the camel's back, <laughs> mm-hmm, mm. or was it the uh, ton of Brexit pile on them? You know. Yeah. Uh, I think it's just been a very slow build-up to this uh, level mm. of uh, degeneracy, to mm. use your terminology, but mm. um, I wouldn't be able to pinpoint uh, yeah. pointing. I mean, I'm only 22. I've not a, lot, a, lot of, a lot of people do um, point to, say, you know, the 60s and, you know, where with all the hippie sort oh, of sexual movement revolution and, and sexual actually. revolution had a lot of bit of I, an impact. I would agree. I would yeah. Agree. But again, um, I mean, there was, I take Weimar, Germany, for example, that uh, very similar to today's situation. And uh, it didn't end too well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's uh, right. And, you know, again, that was the new bourgeois value for them. Mm. Mm. I mean, um, it's, it's pretty sad. I mean, what, what do you think about the whole same-sex marriage thing now becoming law? I mean, that's that's a bit of a, a, a really sort of um, a drastic change that now we have to adopt. And, I mean, especially now that it seems unlikely, or at least, you know, there's a lot of su- suspicion when it comes to the freedom of uh, speech and... Um, freedom of religion and, and whatnot for people to be able to, you know, be able to say their opinion without getting um, um, sued or, or, you know, insulted for it because even though they hold a traditional norm, I mean, do you see in the future maybe that the, the people that hold traditional views are going to be like the degenerates of the past where they had to live underground? The outcasts. The outcasts. So I think it is very much uh, becoming that. Mm. I mean, while we've had relatively positive uh, reactions from the general public, there is quite a lot of hostility to any aspect of uh, traditional values or even just respectful values. Mm-hmm. So I'm not going to say that my worldview is the 100% correct one, but I'm going to stand by it. And I think that uh, I think that I'm significantly more respectful than most of the people out here today. Yeah, yeah, no, that's right. I mean, what what do you think uh, politically? needs to occur for us to be able to go back down the right track that we did in the past and, and, and stop with this fervouring of uh, these uh, agendas? I think we need to wage a cultural war, so mm. to speak. Uh, it's what the left wing have done, is that they got into the institutions and then they managed to change the context of things. For instance, marriage used to... The context of marriage was that it was a, uh, it was a responsibility to yourself, mm. to the church, to the state, and to your partner, and to to provide a safe, uh, safe and stable environment for children. And then mm. they, during the sexual revolution, um, measuring whether a marriage is good only based on love, uh, I think degrades marriage mm. because it it suddenly isn't a responsibility. It suddenly isn't something greater than yourself. It's mm. it becomes more selfish. Well, it's it's more of a um, uh, self like gratification um, yes, rather rather yes. than. Um, rather than basically something having to provide for children and you know trying, than, uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah, exactly right. I mean, um, is there any maybe um, people in the political world that you think um, might be um, at least somewhat representing your views, or do you think that they're all pretty bad at the moment? None of the current politicians, most <laughs> of them are hypocrites. I yeah. Barnaby Joyce and his family values. God bless him. He brought five beautiful children into the world. You know. <laughs> but um, I think that uh, our generation needs to stand up and actually create new political leaders. We don't have someone who's going to come and save us. You know, mm. there's going to be no uh, politician in the current pool of uh, mm. hypocrites that we have. That we They're just represent. there for their own, basically, yes. um, their own uh, interests, rather than trying to do what's right for the country. Exactly. Yes. Mm. And I think that uh, real legitimate people will stand up at the time. The right leaders will be there when it's time to go and we need to organise and create uh, the environment in which those leaders will thrive mm, mm, that's true um, I actually um, wrote an article um, a few days back regarding the, the Mardi Gras and uh, saying that or suggesting at least that we should ban it do you agree with that? I think in the ideal state the Mardi Gras would be unnecessary mm. as in uh, this open display of uh, sexuality would not be encouraged and it would be mm. run upon so whether or not we should ban it, I mean, I think if we got into the ideal state, we wouldn't need to ban it because it just simply it wouldn't exist, exist at all. Yeah. And it, think about it like they didn't need to ban it back when it first started because it wasn't a social thing. People like these days, uh, 
people who go to my ground might not even necessarily be there for the uh, homosexuality issue. I mean, they're just going because their friends are going or mm. because they just want to suss it out and see what it's like. And most people are just here to party and drink and do drugs. No, that's, that's, uh, yeah, that's very true what you mentioned there. I mean, um, it's, it's unfortunate just to, that it's become a, a norm to attend events like this. And I mean... If one of us, for instance, um, were in the mood to, and we wouldn't be, but if we decided to walk around half naked on the street, I'm pretty sure we'd get arrested, wouldn't we? Yes, yes. <laughs> so there is a double standard. And uh, we would be ostracised within our own circles for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe, of course. Maybe we might laugh it off if it was a one-time thing. You know, I got way too drunk one time and mm. went off and did something stupid. You know, I'd have, we'd probably laugh at it, but if it became mm. a common thing that was... That but we definitely was, wouldn't get encouraged and supported no, for it. No, <laughs> It'd be ostracized, ostracization if you made it a habit. And, and, and of course, obviously, another thing is that um, even the police force that is trying to, well, they're supposed to serve and protect, they're actually getting involved in all of this as well. So what does yeah. it say about them? Well, I think it shows that the uh, authorities are also supportive of this, uh, mm. the new elite values that uh, are pushed and promoted by the upper members of our society, mm -hmm. the people who truly control power. I mean, if you've got corporations and state corporations pushing for the same thing, you've got to start questioning it. That's right. I mean, um, what, what do you think the average person like you and me can do to be able to, like, get out there and um, push our views out there and try and create some change? I think the best thing to do is not be afraid, mm. is to stand up and say loudly and clearly what you believe. Mm. And if you're young and my age, I think you should organise into your own groups, find like-minded individuals. Uh, you don't need to do some form of activism with that group, but find them, you know, become a new friends, become a society within a society, so to speak. Mm -hmm. It's how they ended up creating their social chain, so we'll have to do it for us. That, that's correct. I mean, um, it's the only thing we can do, really. I mean, um, just try and get out there and, and don't be scared, you know, push our views out there, trying to create a, a better society, because obviously not only for ourselves, but our children, our grandchildren, you know, because... I mean, the argument um, that you hear a lot is, oh, you know, now that they've got marriage, you're happy and everything. But, I mean, obviously, if we were to look back in time, everybody thought that they were happy um, just to have it decriminalised and um, for them to be accepted as, you know, in, in society. And um, in saying that, then everything else came after that. In 40 years, there's been a lot of LGBT changes in, in the law. They always claim, sorry. Yeah. They always claim that the, uh, that the slippery slope was just a fallacy, but... Mm. Uh, it's something that's been observable in multiple different examples. I mean, not just uh, homosexuality, mm. but in many other social changes. It's that these things do gather momentum. And, and it's only going to get worse down the line as yes, well. Yes, they, 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 all social movements, all cultural movements, if unopposed, will eventually gain momentum and they will uh, they will push through. I mean, the same people that say that slippery slope is a fallacy fight so hard to stop fascism and right-wing extremism. Mm. And, mm. You know, if, if if the slippery slope was a fallacy, they wouldn't try to oppose it. Mm. They wouldn't fight back against it. And uh, I think it just goes to show that they don't believe what they preach. Mm. That's right, yeah. Well, um, yeah, I mean, thanks for coming out and showing your support and, you know, um, just uh, standing by your views and, you know, taking the time to be here tonight and, and defend the cathedral because obviously there's been problems in the past. We have um, seen a, a bit of activity today where there's been, you know, people in obscene sort of clothing and hanging around the cathedral and, you know, trying to sort of start a little bit of trouble. But, um, you know, it, it takes strong individuals to come out and be able to, you know, defend their views and to not be scared about airing their opinions, you know? Yes. So thanks for that and um, thanks for talking to us. It was a pleasure.